to what? Start with me. Astound. Not just start. I mean, it just blinds you when you look at it. You can't look at it straight on without having your mind go what? Gooey. And you say, what are we looking at? It can't be that simple. Mr. Rabbi, was the son crucified? Is he the true Messiah, he who was nailed? Does your own book, your own language testify of that? Okay. Question. Okay, up here for iron, addition of iron. Oh! Yeah, put it back. <laughs> yeah. Sorry Can't. about that. And it's scrambled well, for him. It, it doesn't matter. Okay, go ahead. You, you erase it. But, um, Beth is the woman, normally Eve. Yeah, but or the first read. the prophecy that a sword shall pierce, the, or shall pierce thy heart also, <laughs> said in Mary. So Beth could be Mary being hurt by the covenant nail binding wherein, wherein Christ is. Depending on the degree right. you're reading it, right? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Now this interpretation is uh, only made possible in and through the this, alphabet and grammar. Alphabet and grammar. Unless the alphabet and grammar would have given us the keys. Egyptian symbols. That That's true? right. Unless we had known the sounds and what the sounds meant and then be able to apply those sound definitions to the Hebrew, we could not have done it. Let me give you let me give you an example. This is what's this this is what's called a triplet chain. Uh, we've talked now about several degrees of language. Okay? We'll divert for a second so we can clear that up. The first degree of of understanding language is that the sound itself carries the meaning in spite of the symbol that's attached to it. That that sound was the key to the concept at the very beginning. And then different peoples like Mayans or Greeks or Hebrews picked a different sound, symbol to attach to that sound so that it worked. <clears throat> Once we have symbols attached, we've created letters. But the letters only relate back to the concepts and the symbols in which they relate. To move to the third degree of understanding of language, according to Joseph Smith's alphabet and grammar that we can discern, is when we start combining letters together to form words. But letters are simply what? Composite relationships of different concepts that are represented in the symbol and the sound. And this is where we enter into language and mortality. We learn words from our mother and father. And if we don't know that these two other degrees even exist, we are what? Blind and do not know the greater portion of the word. word. In the fourth degree, like an iota tau zipzi, we have not been taught that you can show a negative reflection of a word and reverse it and see its opposite. It doesn't work in English, but it does in some cases in this system, in the Hebrew. Okay? The fifth degree of understanding language, then, is the concept that you can take three-letter roots, okay, of words, and that they form strings of ideas that create parables or give us instruction on who the son is and what would happen to him. Okay, the sixth degree of understanding language, then, is the idea that you can take symbols and combine them together to create pictures in the form of hieroglyphic that have to be dissected again to get the sound out and the meaning out. For example, Joseph Smith in the Alphabet and Grammar says this character right here is Kolob. You have to generate that back by studying the, the text very, and you have to see its component parts and then put all the component parts big gag together and you can see it is. Can you see how he could see the Hebrew in that? What was the K sound? The, hand. the crook. Okay. What was the L sound? The flail. 
the flail. Then Joseph says the B sound, okay, the extent of the vowel is declared by the length of this extension. That'll tell you your vowel extension. Okay, and this is the B. Read it from top to bottom. Now, how he got, how he did that, I don't know. But it works. Okay, the length of the vowel sound. This is, this will declare you the, the vowel, and the vowel will declare the degree. And so you got some, Beth Ku, Beth Ko, Beth Ki, Beth Ko, you know. And so he, the length of this, this figure right here declares okay how far he is from Adam this diff this character you're looking at how long that line is declares in four degrees how far he is from Adam and let me see if I can find a a sheet to show you what I'm saying oh boy will you bear with me just one second and I'll try to demonstrate for instance in this hieroglyphic depiction of the four sons of Horus, okay, you can see that same figure repeated how many times? It doesn't matter. And it, it, can, it can be either way. Can you see that same figure is repeated? Yes. Can you see that every one of them has a different length? Yes. We wouldn't look for that detail. But Joseph looked at that looked at that character and he says, oh, this is the first father and this is the second, and he gives him a progression out of that. He saw things we wouldn't imagine by way of detail. What are the four sons of Christ? They're the four destroyers, the four chief archangels which control the four quarters of the earth. Four horses of the apocalypse. They are the good guys. Traditionally, in the in the uh, Christian world, they're called Peter. I mean, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Sometimes nobody knows. I asked Nibley one time who they were in actuality and not just theory. He says, "I don't know. If you find out, you come tell me." So that's all I know about. It. I've tried to figure out who they were in terms of the gospel. Let's go back now and look at the some more examples of these triplet chains. What I call a triplet chain is a triplet lettered word that comes in an alphabetical sequence which tells a story. Okay? Now again, you, when you do that, do you just look at the triplet words, you skip over the others? You open the dictionary and you, and you kick out all the fives and six and seven and eight letter words. Okay, there's, an, there's a problem that develops in that two letters seem to float in the system. The yod and the vav. The yod because it has no substance, it's just light. Maybe that's the explanation. And the vav because that which connects. Why they don't count in the number sequence, I don't know. But in this case, you know, this, there would be a, a yod here. The system, and actually we would say that might be a four letter word, but it's not. Okay? Let's see if you can follow it now. We've tried to introduce you to all these characters. Let's see if we can follow the sequence. Who is this? What happens to them? They're being whipped by whom? Can you see the tet here? Okay, what is the definition in the dictionary? To, ha to obtain power, to get mastery, to cause to rule, to have dominion. Okay, does Satan then seek to have dominion over the children of men, whipping them? Can you see how that word is generated from its component parts? Now let's go down the dictionary to the next three-letter word. This is shalot, shalosh, shalak. Okay? Those are the three words. We have the children of men who are what? Whipped, received justice, okay, and more children of men. If this is the total, because we're basing on a base of three, how many of the children of men are removed by the whip? So what is the definition in the dictionary? One-third. 
we go to the next word. We have the children of men again, because this is all just working the same letters back and forth, right? We have the children of men. We have this, the whip of severity or justice. And then we have kolf, which is the hand, right? So the hand takes the whip. And ha what happens to when the children of men are whipped by the hand? They're cast down. So now we're going to ask somebody to read this and see if it doesn't match this. Notice that the syntax is exactly the same. Somebody read it. BNC section 29, 36 through 37. Go ahead. Which is easier to do? Say shalot, 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 or read all of that? Because all of this is what? These three words read in their fifth degree of understanding of language. It's just progressive. You just take the letters, you add the letters and the definitions of the letters to the definition, and it just builds and builds and tells you what tumbles out the Doctrine and Covenants of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Where is it coming from? The dictionary. That's how one book can hold a whole history of the earth. Yes. People have complained saying, how could that Book of Mormon that had that, those many plates and had those writings on it contain so much information? We read nine letters. And within what time? How many? How, I don't know. Somebody count those letters. Tell me how many it expanded to within a short period of time. This is no Terracon. This is Kabbalic, <coughs> Hebrew, rabbinical, translating technique. Okay. 46. Okay. This isn't something Oh, yeah, it is. Joseph Smith <laughs> just like Joseph. had to have had the interpreters, the Yerman folks, yes. or to have been tutored, uh, and, and the Holy Ghost. Or he just been. dictated the material that he read in the stone in the English, and we're only seeing the depth of it now when we take that English and turn it back into the Hebrew. Hebrew. Joseph obtained through his experience in translating the Book of Mormon and using the Yerba Thumb of the ability perhaps to recognize all of this reformed Egyptian. Can you see these guys like the Tanners and Larson? That they're trying to pot shot Joseph and they're so far back that they're not in his dust? that he is working on levels that we haven't even imagined yet, that haven't even been restored to the consciousness of anyone in this generation except Joseph Cain. And it's so simple. You wonder why for thousands of years we haven't seen anything like this. We had no idea that it even existed. It doesn't seem like, I, I'm, I'm not being, a, uh, I'm not defending these guys, but I'm saying, uh, it seems so remote that this obscure boy <coughs> out of Vermont um, comes up with this profound stuff and, and purports to, to have translated from Egyptian documents this stuff. And it does bear scrutiny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and it, these guys should be looking at it and questioning whether or not Joseph did what he said he did. And, and who do they go to? The, the earthly experts. <laughs> who, who can't read it. Who, who can't, can't read, read it. Because they don't know the rules. They're not even playing on the same ballpark. And we have a repeat of the uh, instance of Whitmer taking the, the transcription to <laughs> Professor... Uh, the learned Anthon. man. The Anthon transcript. Dr. Anthon. 
And this is a repeat performance of that same principle, sure. same idea. I will take the weak things of the world and confound the wise. And the kings of the earth shall hear things which they have never considered. Okay. Now here comes the final test. We've given you the test. Now some of you who have been in these lectures before, you know what the final test is. Those who haven't been in the test, okay, you'll, those who have been here before know the key, you're disqualified. You can't come. Okay. <coughs> Those that have never been before and haven't seen this before, this is where you come into your glory. <laughs> what we have done is we've gone to the lexicon again, and we've taken every three-letter word in its alphabetical order and written its definition under the letter H or H in the English, okay? And what we're going to do, I'm going to put these definitions up in their alphabetical order with the words, okay, on the board. Then we're going to start reading those definitions down, and I want someone to tell me when they recognize it what the story is that's being told. Fair enough? You ready? Okay. Here we go. Lo and behold, aha, I see a vapor or a mist of darkness. This mist of darkness is the vanity of man. I must divine a way to get through it. Therefore, I devise a plan, but I hear the sounding of breaking waves. But look, there is something which is stretched out to give direction to guide me right as I tread upon the footstool of the earth. Is what? Is it? No. In the beginning. Okay. I come to a tree. Oh, okay. I come to a tree. There are many people who are what? <coughs> thrusting their way toward the tree. This tree is the lofty majesty of God. It is who? He himself. What is this letter? Okay. What? That's the ox. It is he himself, the majesty and splendor. What is this tree? The breath of life. Okay. Is the fruit of that tree what? The love of God. But there is a threatening wo woe as I walk. I see a multitude who are making noise. There's much commotion. Who are they? They're the rich who have enough, who live comfortably. How do I know? I was on the mountain and had a vision, right? I see, when it comes to pass, they keep going until they come to what? Lofty, spacious building. <laughs> now watch this. If I change great and lofty, spacious building and I double the Lamads, remember the double of justice? Yeah. Who's it turn out to be? Who is the proprietor of this place? Okay. Is he greatly to be admired? I hope he stays in the distance. Maybe there's a gulf affixed between me and where he is. But I, oh, I see solemn processions, companies of travelers who what? Who vanish. Who are they? The proud. The proud. Why? Double, Double lama. Okay. What happens to them? They're beaten and stricken and scattered. By whom? Messiah has the whip. Comes from the throat. Okay. There's the sound of waves, right? There's tumult, disturbed and tumultuous people. Multitudes of men. Hosts as if it were plenty of water. As if they come and rain incessantly. What happens? They make extinct. There is a raging. There is the breaking and sound of twigs and branches. There is a rapid stream. Okay. Can you see that Nephi took the story down to here? So what's all the rest of this? Remember Nephi saying what? I'm not, I can't write anymore, but my father is greatly concerned for Laman and... Why was he so concerned? Because they saw what happened to the great and spacious building. Should we read the rest? Yeah. Curious? Should we put in parts that were edited out of the yeah. text? That's a dangerous thing to say on camera, isn't it? <laughs> if you want to see this, this is 1 Nephi chapter 12. Okay. Lo and behold, there's finally silence in the land. 
something has been overthrown. Could it be the perverseness of the world? Weapons, instruments of arms have come. There is a great slaughter. This Isaiah. Yeah. Isaiah, the swelling of the wall. Remember that? When it breaks, it finally breaks and crushes all of them. The high and lofty palace is what? Pulled down. Pulled down as if mountains had tumbled upon it. It is caused to fall. And those who deceive, what? It breaks in and crushes. That is every three-letter word in the dictionary under the letter H and its definition in its alphabetical order. Under the letter H. That's all it is. That's all of them. That's all of them. That's all there is? Yes. Yeah. See, this is A, this is A, and this is T. Oh, okay. Alpha and Omega. <coughs> and How many symbols are there? 22. 22. Okay. Three-letter word, right? Every three-letter word. Well, there's some twos, and like in this case where you got your yodes, they don't count, so I stuck those in too, so you can see Lucifer in the great and spacious building and how they related. Are there other stories interwoven in, say, four-letter words, or does this only apply to three-letter words? What do you think? Five-letter words? Probably. You think it could be... <laughs> we haven't got an idea of what we've got. We've got a clue. We've looked beyond this, though. we have to make it simple enough that we can give it to the members of the church in a way that they can follow it within a relatively short period of time. Okay? So, so what is this book, the dictionary? Is it scripture? Yeah. Okay. Hidden. If you're spiritually discerned, it's Hidden scripture. scripture. Hidden scripture. Seers give us hidden things. Where are they hidden? Right before our very eyes. Do the rabbis think that's scripture? Why do the rabbis? The rab we, we haven't shown this to the rabbis yet. Okay? There'll be a time. All right, now we've been going for quite a while now, and uh, the forest is cold and dark and deep, and we have promises to keep, and miles to go before we sleep, and miles to go before we sleep. So, can I conclude now? By first of all thanking you for your quiet reverence and attention to me. It is kind of a, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised when anybody <laughs> comes out to listen to me, <laughs> but I'm thankful that you did, because it gives me a chance to share my testimony. It gives me a chance to give you what's inside me. That I, it's like I've walked into this room of treasures in this book the dictionary. And in this room of treasures I picked up a, a crystal orb and a silver sword and a pile of gold plates and walked back out and said, look what's in here. And I'd like to go back into that room now and see what else we can find. But what we hauled out in the first trip is what? Enough to astound. Enough to change all the rules. And enough to cause us to reconsider everything we ever learned because now every word of the scripture must be understood every translation of the Bible is now in question because we've got to figure out why the prophet chose that word what are the component parts of that word does that word fit in a story in a triplet chain which gives <coughs> it a context as to why Isaiah or Jeremiah or Jesus chose that word and stuck it in that slot what are the hidden meanings on the different levels here? Can you see that we're starting now to enter a brand new plane and level of understanding scripture because of this much maligned little book of Joseph Smith? Okay. I began by saying I wanted to achieve three things. One, that you might gain a new and increased faith that Mormon scripture is authentic, restored, ancient material. Two, that Joseph Smith was in fact a prophet of God sent to restore that material. And three, that the words themselves testify that Jesus is the Christ. Fair enough? I've done that as simply and as forthrightly as I know how to do it. 
But of all the testimonies of him which have been given, this is the testimony which we give last of all, that he lives. I want you to know that Joe Sampson knows that Jesus is the Christ and that Jesus lives. The rabbi yet lives. The Son of God breathes. Okay? This is his church. And Joseph was his prophet. And all else beyond that is foolishness. For I am a blind man in the midst of a generation of blind men. And we know nothing at all. Except it be revealed to us by God. We remain in darkness. Ezra Taft Benson said this. Note the words and how they were used. I, he says, we invite each member of the church to read again and again the Book of Mormon. Those who teach or speak in church meetings should carefully and prayerfully use the Book of Mormon to strengthen and enhance their messages and presentations. I bless you with an increased understanding, and they've italicized the word, as if somebody knew the deeper meaning of the word, <laughs> an increased understanding of the Book of Mormon. I promise you that from this moment forward, if we will daily sup from its pages and the more difficult part, truly abide by its precepts, God will pour out upon each child of Zion and the church a blessing hitherto unknown. A blessing <coughs> hitherto unknown. I don't know if this is that, but it could be. It could be a part of the beginning of more light than we can look at straight at. God bless you.